This isn't the first time we've seen a virtual reality trend pop up. However, this time it may have a bit more longevity. Back in the 1990s, the gaming industry tried to embrace virtual reality. However, we feel that these ambitious efforts may have been a bit ahead of their time. Here's a list of virtual reality tech from the 90s that never took off. The Stuntmaster 1993 The Stuntmaster was the precursor for the Cybermax. It was released by a company called Victimax that have long since been disbanded. The Stuntmaster design claimed to have head tracking, but in actual fact, it just used a plastic stick that hung off the back of the device to track the user's movements as it passed over their shoulder. As you can imagine, this was a completely ineffective motion tracking system, and the Stuntmaster soon became old. Cybermax 1994 the Cybermax was the fresh new sibling to the Stuntmaster. It came with full solid head tracking, a stereoscopic 3D display in the form of 2.7 inch color active matrix LCD screens and was priced under $699. There were also a fair few games to be played on the Cybermax, such as Doom 2, Duke Nukem and Wolfenstein to name a few. Although this seemed like a good formula for a virtual reality headset at the time, the Cybermax still failed to gain any real traction and ultimately failed to take off. Virtual I.O. Eyeglasses 1995 The eyeglasses were a pre-Apple attempt at an eye product. This attempt was slightly higher in specification as it offered a stereoscopic 3D colour display that had 360 degree capabilities. The product is shown in early marketing video being used as a flight simulator controller. The eyeglasses retailed at under $1,000 but still fell short of the mark when it came to igniting the virtual reality market. Nintendo Virtual Boy 1995 The Nintendo Virtual Boy was another short-lived attempt at VR. The ambitious effort to make a three-dimensional virtual reality headset resulted in what was effectively a 3D viewing system. The 32-bit 3D gaming console was released in March 1995 by Nintendo and retailed at around $180. It is reported that Nintendo spent $25 million promoting the product, but all of this was to no great avail. Its lack of success in the United States meant that it was not built for any other regions and was discontinued on March 2nd, 1996, the following year. VX1, 1995 The VX1 was arguably the most standout virtual reality product of the era. It was developed by Forte Technologies Inc who premiered the VX1 as its first product in 1995. It retailed at under $695, putting it nicely under the $1,000 mark, which was dramatically cheaper than some of the professional virtual reality headsets available at the time. The device consisted of three main components, the headset, a handheld controller called the Cyberpuck, and an ISA interface called the VIP board. The VIP board was the heart of the operation and was used to route the data between the three of the devices. In total, the headgear weighed two and a half pounds and adopted a virtual orientation system that used the Earth's magnetic field to track movement, similar to a compass. A downside to this was that the device had to be kept away from large metal objects and had to be calibrated for a user-specific geographical location. To play texture map games, you would have needed a Pentium 2 processor and a good few megabytes of RAM. Although most PC games didn't offer support for the headset and required additional drivers to be installed, like head tracking and stereoscopic 3D. All said and done though, this may have been by far the best virtual reality headset of the time, but still didn't manage to hit the ground running. This may have been due to the limitations of graphics during this time, which is something that could probably be said for the entire spectrum of virtual reality in the 90s. The ideas and science fiction dreams of Tron-like interactions may have been running too fast for the technology to keep up. So this begs the question, are we at a time now where the technology has caught up with the dreams of our virtual interaction? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching.